Coding Made Easy. So what's up everybody? This is Peter aka Coding Made Easy coming to you with your your what third yeah third Java tutorial and in this tutorial we are going to be learning about the very foundation of Java uh, which is variables. Now one thing I, I want you to think of back into when you were like in probably grade seven or eight or I don't know how your school system works but when you were young and you were in math and you had an equation and it would say let x be five and let y be three what is x plus y and you would say okay you would substitute x with the number five and you substitute y with the number three and you would say five plus three is equal to eight well this is essentially how variables work in the Java programming language they serve as containers for values so let me uh, think of uh, more of a real-world example so let's say we have system out print line let's let's say we, we have a we have a battle system in the game and we say the monster attacks we say monster attacks and we'll say like the health is minus uh, we health is subtracted by 10 well what is the health whose health what health are we subtracting by? Um, how do we know what the current health is? How do they know if my health is at 100 or if it is at 65? We have no way of knowing. We have to store that into a variable to let us know what the value of health is. Now, um, I'm not going to be teaching you all the different data types for for C sharp. I, did I say C sharp for Java? Sorry. Um, but uh, these are some of the common uh, data types. So I'll be teaching you all of them later on. But for now, these are the common ones. And I won't be going in depth into all of them yet, but we will be covering all of them. But the int stands for uh, integer, float stands for floating point number, uh, double, I think, double float, double floating point number, boolean is a uh, bool stands for boolean. And char stands for a character. And uh, what we're going to be looking in, we're going to be using the int keyword, and we might use the others by the end of this tutorial. So the int stands for integer, and the syntax, and I should describe what syntax is. Syntax is kind of like the rules of the language, kind of like the rules of English or the rules of, of French or the rules of Spanish, of how sentences flow. The, that's how our program runs. It runs in sort of like a programming flow and it has, a, it has rules and conventions to it. So what we do is we specify the variable type and we specify the variable name. Now there's different there's rules to naming variables. First of all you cannot start it with an, a number uh, but after but you can start it with a dollar sign an underscore or any character. Now it is not recommended to start it with a dollar sign sign or whatever, but the option is there. Normally people start it with a letter or an underscore, but I like to start it with a letter. So after you use a letter, you can put any numbers or any any amount of letters or any number any length you want it to be after that. It could be however long you want it to be, but normally you want to name it something that is very relevant. Uh, relevant. Sorry. So when people read your code, they know what it means. So I'm going to say Peter's health. And we're going to end that with a semicolon. Remember, because semicolons end a statement or end a line and makes it known that we're going to we're gonna take another command. So we have an integer called Peter's health. So whenever we make a call to Peter's health, we're identifying um, whatever value we store into it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say Peter's health is equal to 100. So now my health is equal to 100. So when the monster attacks now and uh, we do whatever, we're going to say Peter's health is equal to 100 subtract 10. And or not 100 subtract 10. So we're going to say Peter's health subtract 10. And then we're going to say system dot out dot print line and we're gonna print out Peter's health so we're just gonna put Peter's health in there 
and that is going to display our new health so what's going to happen we created an integer and we identified it as peter's health so whenever we make a reference to peter's health now whatever stored into it we know that value so we're saying peter's health is set to the value 100 so we said okay the monster attack so we lose 10 10 health lose 10 hp so we say peter's health is equal to peter's health subtract 100 so remember whenever we uh, see the value peter's health it's just like how we did it in grade school uh, grade school so we're going to replace peter's health with, with this value so we're going to say the new value of peter's health is equal to what's the value of it it's 100 so it's equal to 100 subtract 10 so our new value will be 90 we use a print line function, which is very versatile. The print line function can be used to print variables. It can be used to print uh, uh, strings, integers, characters, anything you want it to. And so we're going to print out our variable, and we will get the value 90. So once we run this program, I'm going to bring this down to show you. It says monsters atta monster attacks, health minus 10, and our new health is set to 90. So um, other ways variables work is we can even declare the value of the variable on the on the line where, where we initialize it. So we can say Peter's health is equal to 100. And we set it all in one line and we can do the same thing we've done with it. Another cool uh, feature that I will add for the print line is if we wanted to say we want to we don't want to just put the value 90 like we did down here right what is 90 90 what so we want to say peter's health is 90 so how how would we go about that well with the print line function is pretty cool it's pretty neat because you can do a bunch of things with it you can attach a bunch of you can attach text variables values whatever all in one print line and so we're going to say print we're going to say peter's health is and I'm gonna put space and then we're gonna say the plus sign so right after this text we're gonna say plus a variable and it's going to replace that with the value 100 and it's gonna say Peter's health is and it's gonna say 100 so once we run this we're gonna say okay and we're gonna drag this down and it says Peter's health is 100 and there you go so just to explore some of the the different uh, the different data types, if we do float, a float is a floating point number, and that's more like a real number in math. So it can be any number, any number with a decimal, any whole number, anything with it. it could be 10.0, uh, can be whatever. Now, whenever you make a float, if you put 10.0, it detects it as a double by default. And so what you want to do is put an F at the end to let it know that is it is a float. A double is just like a float. Uh, I'll call this test variable. A double is just like a float, but it contains more bytes in memory. So um, if you had a long, like say you were calculating the mass of the earth or something, and it's a super long number that requires a lot of data, uh, or so on and so forth then you might use a double but generally you will use a float for whatever you need but in order to distinguish between a float and a double you need to put an F at the end of it we also have boolean a boolean variable um, I will say Peter's help is a value it's either true or false so it can have two values true or false and um, you can do this for different calculations like you could say okay if um, you could say like is Peter alive and you can say true and then you can do different things with that or you could say is Peter alive false so there's a, a, a and it, it's a, you can do a lot of different things with the boolean and a char is a single character so we'll say single char and the way to do a char, you do single quotes, not double quotes, and you can put a single letter in there and end it um, with a semicolon. So you can do different things like that, like um, enter a single, do you want to run this program again, enter Y, or you could say Y for yes, N for no, or you can do different things with the characters. But um, I'm going to end this tutorial here. 
and I'm gonna be doing a little bit more on variables in the next tutorial and then we will get on to or probably in the next tutorial we'll get on to user input and you'll learn more about variables through that so I hope you enjoyed this hope you didn't get too confused and thanks for watching don't forget to comment rate and subscribe and the next tutorial will be coming out in the within the next three hours so that's it and bye